this is not going to work for me. I'm, I'm absolutely miserable. And I told him, I'm so unhappy. And, and he looked at me and he said, there's nothing I can do that will ever make you happy. I've just finally realized I can't make you happy. And, you know, I, I agreed with him. I thought, hmm, you know, he can't, he can't make me happy. And, um, I was so miserable and he was so miserable. And I just thought if only he could improve, I could be happy. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm revealing three mistakes with splitting the chores and how to get more help with housework. My guest Renee's marriage consisted of a cycle of big blowups, then cold wars, then huge emotional hangovers over and over again. Then Renee took a long look at herself, saw some things that she could improve. Today, her marriage is mostly peaceful, and she's married to a great man who just wants to serve his wife and family. She's going to tell us how she did it, so you can do it too. But first, let's uncover the three mistakes of splitting chores and how to get more help with housework. I was terrible at this early on. I found myself doing all the housework not long after we were married because I thought it would be nice for him if I did that, and I wanted to be a nice wife. And I also wanted a clean house and homemade meals and neatly folded laundry. And I wanted those things done the right way. But it wasn't long before I was overwhelmed and exhausted and mighty resentful. So resentful, I was resent overflowing because I was doing everything while he was just skating along, watching TV, like I was the mom and he was a little boy. I don't know if you can relate to that, but I decided that he had to help. And I told him that, but he didn't help. He wouldn't. And looking back, I can see why he wouldn't. When I told him he had to help, my resentment flowed out all over our apartment and solidified the mess as it hardened, making it impossible for anyone to clean. But I didn't know I was making these three outrageous mistakes that were preventing him from doing chores. And I'm not the only one. I hear from students that they were making these same mistakes until they learned what to do. Are you making them too? Well, here they are along with what to do instead. Mistake number one is assigning the chores. One way to end up like the mom who does all the chores with the little boy who doesn't do much is to put yourself in charge. When I was making lists and nice spreadsheets of who was responsible for what and putting them on the fridge, I was desperate for some help. But I was also setting up the dynamic where I was the boss and that made him the employee, the terrible employee who I couldn't even fire. He wasn't motivated to be an employee, nor was he otherwise inspired to help me, even though I thought he should. If only I had known about expressing my desires in a way that inspires, which I shared about in last week's podcast, which is called the five mistakes that make him tune you out and what to say instead. If you miss that, be sure to check it out because honestly, I just want every woman to learn this life-changing phrase. It is so awful when you don't know it, and it is so great once you do know it. So check that out. Once I knew how to express my desires in a way that inspires, I triggered my husband's hero gene. He would go to any lengths to make me happy. He was eager and happy to do the dishes and pretty much anything else I desired. That's how inspired he was. Mistake number two, redoing what he did. Another big mistake I was making in those bad old days of overflowing laundry and dust and dirty dishes was that when he did make some effort to clean, I would undo it and redo it. Who's with me here? Raise your hand if you've ever rearranged the dishwasher he loaded or refolded the clothes he folded. I'll take comfort imagining that you have your hands up too, like thousands of you are raising your hand right now. And it wasn't just me, hopefully. <clears throat> I hope I'm not the only person who had this embarrassing compulsion. 
I mean, I always had a good reason. You know, the dishes wouldn't come out clean or the clothes would wrinkle. Or maybe, maybe I just like to feel right and have things done my way. Both of those things are definitely true. But today, I'm not one to undo and redo, even in secret, because first of all, he does a great job. So good. But but what if he didn't? You know, what then? Well, that's how it was before when I was always looking for what wasn't done the right way. To paraphrase Francis O. Walsh, I was great at finding fault, like it was buried treasure. And what you seek matters because you tend to find it everywhere you look. And these days I have a different focus. I'm looking for what he did right. And that's what I find everywhere I look. Like after he did the dishes and cleaned the stove while I was working on this podcast. Mistake number three, not appreciating what he did. When I was seething with resentment, it was impossible for me to appreciate any housework my husband did because it was way too little, too late. I was doing everything and he wasn't thanking me. So it didn't even occur to me to thank him. He would have had to somehow make up for years of not doing enough for me to even feel that he deserved a, a terse thank you. So I was very self-righteous that he did not deserve any gratitude because I had done so much more than him. Doing some of the housework was his responsibility anyway, so I didn't think I should have to thank him. But I don't feel that way anymore. You know, once I became willing to open my eyes a little wider by making a gratitude list for him, it turned out John was doing plenty, a lot, to lighten my load. He was boxed up decorations and putting them up in the attic and cleaning the stove and the coffee maker and stopping for groceries and making my tea and, and getting the towels out for the guests and making the bed and putting away laundry and grilling the steak. And without all his efforts, my life would be incredibly different. Now, not thanking him and telling him how happy I am that he does those things, that seems crazy. And the more I tell him how grateful I am, the more he seems to want to do for me. And these days I rarely feel that old creeping resentment that used to come over me. But I know that if I do, the instantaneous cure is to make that gratitude list. So it might be an interesting experiment to do if you're wanting more help with the chores to make your own list of at least 10 things your husband does to lighten your load and then thank him. Let him know how happy he makes you. Maybe you feel like I did that he doesn't deserve it, but it's not him I'm thinking about. It's you, you having that heavenly grateful feeling of knowing you're well taken care of and adored by a man who just wants to be your hero. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Renee's marriage consisted of a cycle of big blowups, then cold wars, and then huge emotional hangovers over and over again. Then Renee took a long look at herself and saw some things she could improve. Today, her marriage is mostly peaceful, and she's married to a great man who just wants to serve his family and his wife. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Renee, welcome to the Empower Wife podcast. Thank you so much Hi. for coming on. Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to hear your whole story. So tell us what things were like in the battle days. What was going wrong? Well, in the bad old days, you know, I was what I thought was the perfect wife. I think, 
you know, that's one of the things that uh, made me re or I was really appealed to your story because you talked about, you know, you had all these qualities that made you the perfect wife. And I thought that is exactly me on paper. Everything looked absolutely perfect. I was so what I thought understanding and helpful. And um, and so I thought, wow, my husband has a lot of problems and I honestly thought, you know, this is not what I signed up for. And the only reason that I wasn't ready to go ahead and ask to, you know, a divorce really to move on was that we had had a beautiful wedding. (laughs) And I was like, well, you know, we haven't even gotten the wedding pictures back yet. So the least I can do is try. So, you know, in the bad old days, I felt like, um, My husband had a hard time listening to me. I had a lot of really good, helpful advice, and he just refused to really take it. Um, I felt like he was, you know, I used the word, I'm embarrassed to say now, but I used the word lazy. I felt like he was a a lazy person. Um, He wasn't, I felt like he could be more financially responsible. I felt like he could um, handle his family a little bit better, be more engaged with his family. Um, I felt like he could be more loving towards me. Um, he just had all these areas to improve upon. And if he would only listen to me, his life would be really perfect. And, and so, (laughs) and so, and yeah, and, and it's just really crazy listening to it. How, um, egotistical, Um, It sounds now that I didn't really hear that before, Um, but at the time, I felt like he could do a lot better if he really just listened to what I had to say. Yeah. So what would happen when you would try to tell him these things? Well, a lot of times what would happen is we would have these huge blow up fights. I would try to what I thought was communicate to him and we would have these huge blow up fights and then he would just shut down. Um, We use the word cold wars now and we absolutely had cold wars. So he would just totally shut down, not talk to me and I would do everything I could to what I thought was communicate, get us back on the right track. And he just wouldn't listen. I mean, there was one point and I, you know, I'm really embarrassed to think about it now, but you know, I, I pushed him. He wouldn't listen to what I was saying. And I was like, listen to me. And I pushed him. And it was at that moment, I looked him in the eyes and realized, Hmm, you know, that might not be the best idea. <laughs> He's a pretty big guy. I might better find a better way to communicate with my husband. Um, and so just kind of, you know, just kind of gave me a look like bad idea, honey. And so it's like, okay, you know, um, and at that point, I really hadn't learned even to apologize. You know, can you imagine if, if someone pushed you and you didn't even think to apologize to them? Mm. And so, um, it was just really bad. It's really. about how desperate you were, right? That this is, you were trying to get through to him and there was, it wasn't working. So right. to me, to me, that's what that represents. Like I am trying, I, this is all I've got. So I'm pushing right. you because, you know, please start talking to me again. We, you know, why are we having this cold war? Why is there no talking? Uh, yes. So anyway, I can, yeah, I can just relate to feeling like I got to do something dramatic here. Yeah. And, and that's uh, a great great word for it. Dramatic. I was desperate. I was absolutely in desperation. And, you know, I told him a a few times, I just, I can't live like this. If this is forever, if this is what our forever is going to look like, a cycle of us fighting, us um, having these, you know, cold wars and you not talking to me, that it's, this is not going to work for me. I'm, I'm absolutely miserable. And I told him I'm so unhappy. And, and he looked at me and he said, there's nothing I can do that will ever make you happy. I've just finally realized I can't make you happy. And, you know, I, I agreed with him. I thought, Hmm, you know, he can't, he can't make me happy. And, um, I was so miserable and he was so miserable. And I just thought if only he could improve, (laughs) I could be happy, you know? Um, And so it was just, it was a miserable 
we were, we were in a miserable state. It was a cycle. It was a loop of the same thing every day, every day, Groundhog Day. <laughs> Groundhog <laughs> just, Day, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a loop, a one um, really argument after another. And it didn't matter. And I don't even know what we were arguing. When I really think about it, um, the battle days, I can't really pinpoint and say, okay, these are the things that we argued about because I don't really know. I just know I was always mad. I was constantly in a state of disappointment, um, constantly in a state of let down and just like, you know, I thought I was a pretty smart person, but I picked a bad mate. And although I had waited till I was older to get married and I, I had felt like we had done our due diligence <laughs> in really getting to know each other. And I just felt like, you know what, you win some and you lose some. And, and, and you just made a mistake. I like made a mistake. Of, you kind of got tricked, it sounds like, yeah. in a way. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, um, so because, and because you were embarrassed and the wedding was not that long ago, you just thought, okay, I'll just keep trying. But really, it sounds like part of you was like halfway out of this marriage anyway. Is that right? Absolutely. If there would have been a dignified way that I could have escaped, I would have left. I'd, I would have been gone. Um, but I had my family and his family and, and all of these pressures that made me say, I can't go. And obviously I really loved him. Right. But I felt like that, that was an emotional decision and I needed to use my head for once. And, you know, I'd used my emotions to get married and this time I needed to use my head and figure out how I can strategically get out of this marriage. And because I couldn't really, you know, I went to him on more than one occasions, by the way, and said, you know, I'm not happy. I want to get out of this ma marriage. He'd, t he'd taken me on this beautiful vacation where he had um, planned everything and made sure it was in, you know, he's really budget conscious. Um, and but he he planned everything and we got to this vacation and I day two of the vacation, I told him that, you know, how unhappy I was and how I wanted to, you know, get a divorce. And he said, I have biblically, I have not done anything that constitutes a divorce. There's nothing that I have done that you can say that um, legitimately, you know, you should divorce me. I have not abandoned you. I've not. And he just went through the list and I said, hmm, okay, well, uh, He's got me. Well, okay, I gotta, you know, I was, I was frustrated <laughs> because I felt like once again, he's outsmarted me. You know, first of all, he's smarted me, outsmarted me into marrying him. And now he's outsmarted me on divorcing him. So I've got to figure out a way that, um, figure something out. You know, maybe I can outsmart him. I don't yeah. know, but I've got to, I've got to figure something out. So I but started you felt my research. Stuck. You felt pretty trapped in it. Oh, if that is not the perfect word, I do not know what is. I felt so trapped. I felt I and I started to think about my single days and how great my life was and how and by the way, I was telling him the, these things, you know, I how accomplished I was and how he was bringing me down. I mean, just, you know, when I think about it now, it it really is the bad old days because, you know, things that I would talk and say, and then at the same time in my head, I'm thinking I'm such a supportive wife, you know, good luck him trying to yeah. find someone better than me, you know, and yeah. By, the, yeah, by the way, I'm just, I'm, you know, eating him alive every chance I get. So I, you know, of course I got online and I started researching and researching and I, um, you know, I found some counselors and we had already been to premarital counseling before we got married. And and it wasn't the best, you know, he, he wanted certain requirements and I, I thought I found all those things. And then later on, it turns out that I think the, you know, he left the counseling. I continued and, um, and then the counselor started calling me every day on the way to, to work. And then I kind of realized, I think this counselor has a little bit of crush on me. Um, oh. And so I was kind of put off for on counselors already. Um, because of the experience we had had with the premarital counseling. And I thought, you know, I think all men counselors are just looking for <laughs> uh, easy access to women. You know, I had formed that opinion because of 
of that the experience with the, that premarital counselor. Um, but I, I said, well, let's try one more time. So we did the counseling session. And, you know, the minute I got a chance to talk, I just went into all the ways that he was such a disappointment. And I mean, I just, some of the things that I said, I'm embarrassed that I, that they came out of my mouth. I mean, every, every aspect of our relationship, I just ripped him apart to the counselor, you know, trying to justify that he yeah. was a bad husband. Yeah. And if I could only get the permission from this counselor, I would have the justification I need to finally get out of this thing, you know, yes. um, that the counselor would agree that, yes, you know what? You made a mistake. I agree. This yeah. guy's terrible. Yeah. You're great. And you should, you know, you should yeah. move on. You'd be better off without him. Right? You'd be better Something. off. Right. Right. Yeah. And so the session it didn't go too well. And um, needless to say, that was our last session with that counselor because, you know, my husband really felt attacked. And so I said, OK, well, I'm going to have to try to fix this on my own. Counseling is not going to work. So I started um, reading books and we found um, actually found a ma marriage um, a, another group of, um, they weren't really counselors, they were pastors, uh, marriage pastors. And so we went to some marriage retreats with them and this lasted for a couple of years. And, you know, they gave me some good tips. Um, you know, one of the tips that the uh, female, um, pastor gave me was the idea of, you know, um, taking it, um, a couple of hours to not say much, which we call in this program duct tape. Right. And, you know, I, I did try that. It was, um, it, it did, I did hear some things from my husband that I hadn't heard before. And I thought that was an effective practice. Um, but it was really just sort of, you know, try for two hours and see if it works. And, you know, I was just really looking at my watch the whole time thinking, when is my two hours going to be up? <laughs> and so, um, you know, it was, it was, it was I have good. a lot to say here. Can you yeah, just kind of, <laughs> um, but it wasn't as effective as it could have been. Right. So, you know, we went to this retreat and the last year we went to the marriage retreat. I put all this work into doing a dance and. Um, he did not participate in the dance the whole time I, um, sat down and like the other, um, couples were dancing and they were trying to encourage him to dance and he wouldn't dance with me. And I, I was so hurt. I was so hurt that, you know, I had, um, I was on the dance committee. The least that he could do <laughs> was dance with his wife after I had put in all this work, um, and so I just decided, okay, no more of these marriage retreats. And so that's when I found a book at the time it was called kill all the marriage counselors. <laughs> and, um, and I believe it's called the empowered wife. Now I've, I've read so many of your books, but that was the very first one that I read or rather I listened to it on audiobook. And of course the title pulled me in because of my experience. I'd <laughs> yeah, had that's true. With, you were... with, the, <laughs> with the marriage counselor, who, you know, <laughs> Uh, it was rather inappropriate. Um, so uh, I read the book and um, that day I went home. The first thing I tried was the um, financial piece. I said, you know, I said to my husband that I was, I was, I'm really sick of, um, well, how did I phrase it? I said something along the lines of, you know, I'm um, paying the bills is, is really beginning a being a burden on me and it's really stressing me out and it would really help me if you could start paying the bills every month and I just thought he's not going to want to do that he's you know that's some responsibility and he immediately was just like okay sure no problem and you know ultimately it's clicking a few buttons every month but <laughs> that's, you know that's <laughs> you know that's all it is but something about him you know, number one, being able to see the comings and goings of our finances. Um, number two, him having that um, some level of maybe control, you know, being able. But I think more than anything, I said the word help. <laughs> and I think that's where he heard me and he thought, oh, this is somewhere I can help her. And he immediately jumped to this day. Years later, he still pays the bills every month. And it does. It, helps it, do, it, it does help me. It does. Um, 
And uh, so that's that was my first thing I experimented with. Um, I and tried. Were, were I'm you sorry. surprised how well that went? Like, were you like, oh, OK, that, that well, was. I was really quite surprised at how quickly he agreed to it. Um, yeah. And, and it was it was very easy. And so it made me think, hmm, try something else. OK, <laughs> this is going pretty good. And so um, I tried the duct tape. And I had a different idea of it this time. It wasn't about a time limit, right? It wasn't, it was just about, okay, give him the space to say whatever he wants to say. You can say, mm hmm, you can say, <laughs> you can laugh, but just give him the space, okay? And that weekend, he told me things that. And I had known this man for years, even before we got married. He told me things that I had never known or heard from him. And at some point in the conversation, he said, hmm, let me see what else I can tell you. And, and that's when I said, oh, this is working. He likes being heard. This is interesting. And another thing that helped me was all of a sudden I felt this level of stress or just me feeling like I'm the one who needs to maintain the relationship. I'm the one who needs to maintain communication. I'm the one who needs to control everything and keep us on a good path. All of a sudden there was this burden that was lifted from me that I had no idea I was carrying. I did not even realize my need to constantly fill the space with conversation had become a burden on me. That I could actually just sit in the car and listen to my music or listen to a book or just relax and look out the window. I did not need to carry on a conversation. If I had something to say, I could say it. But there was no burden that I needed to do that. And then I would find him saying, oh, can you take your earphones out? And, you know, he'd want to talk to me about certain things. And so, and at one point he said to me, you're such a good listener. I thought, no way. Who, who is he talking to? Because nobody's ever said that to me in my life <laughs> that I'm a good listener. <laughs> um, I mean, that must have made you feel so good to, like, he's opening up and you're having this nice conversation and... It's because you're a good listener. Like you brought that, you changed how you were showing yeah. up and it changed everything about the way you were interacting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it was pretty amazing. So that was my duct tape experience. Um, some of the other things I tried and, you know, I realized for him, and perhaps it was the way that, that I was using it. The, um, you know, I tried the um, whatever you think and, there were some times where he, he didn't care for that. You know, he would say, because I think he was actually wanting to know what I wanted. Right. So I, now I've learned for that phrase, that's something in our relationship. Um, I use that sparingly. Um, I use it when I really want to know or really believe whatever he thinks is the best, not as just an exercise, but when, so recently we had some, um, I don't know if it was rain coming into the windows or the roof or something. I have no idea because he takes care of all those things because I trust my husband. And so he came to me and he, he was asking me some different questions about what we should do, if we should, you know, do this, if we should replace the windows. If we, and I really didn't know. I truly had no idea. Now, if he'd come to me about information security or, you know, something that I'm familiar with, perhaps <laughs> I would have been able to help him. But I had no idea what the best, you know, um, what the best plan was. So I just said to him, you know, whatever you think, honey, I, you know, I trust your decision making on this because I truly and so I truly felt like whatever he thought, I knew he would make the best decision. He's a very thoughtful person. And he would come up with the best decision for us. And so it's one of those things that I've learned to kind of use that phrase sparingly um, because that's really not his favorite. Um, because usually when he's asking me something, he really wants to know. Um, 
But some other things that have really changed our relationship is, and this is the hardest one, but apologizing. Um, one of the times when I, I remember when I very first read, I think um, it was one of your, I think it was your second book. And I said, okay, I've got to start this apologizing stuff um, because I really started to see myself in a lot of, of the book as far as my, my controlling ways, um, just me speaking to him in a derogatory manner. And so I said, you know, we'd had this huge blow up and I don't even remember what we were arguing about, but I know that I did not show up dignified. I know that I was insulting to him. I told him the things that I tell him all the time. You're lazy. I do everything by myself. Um, you know, I'm the one that's holding this family together. I can't count on you. Um, and he, he'd had a really hard time. He had a, um, a situation with his, um, I recall now he had a situation with his business um, that he had at the time and um, the business wasn't doing well. Um, and it really, it really hurt his self-esteem and oh, he was just in a very bad place. And, you know, prior, I didn't at this time, I didn't have the skills. Okay. So I was, I was doing everything I could to try to figure out how I could be better. I was, you know, I was calling these marriage hotlines and, you know, you get one person giving you one piece of advice and one person giving you another piece of advice. And one lady told me that, you know, you know, your husband is just not performing well, you know, that you may want to consider this is someone that you should spend the rest of your life with. And this is, and at the time he had told me that he was feeling so low that he didn't know if he could continue going on. And keep in mind, my husband is the most confident man I've ever met. He is the most, <sighs> he's such a strong person. So for him to say something like this was very much out of character. And I actually said to him at that time, you know, you, you know, you let me down. I can't count on you. I'm the one who always comes through. I mean, just the things that I said was just pre-skills was very bad. And so... Um, at one point I, 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 after I had the skills, I went back to him and I said, I apologize because when you were going through all the things with your business, I was very disrespectful to you. And I'm, I'm very sorry. And he just, he didn't really know how to take that. And, um, he really didn't take my apology. If I'm being honest, he just kind of looked at me and he just he kept going, right? He just kept going in. But at that point I had learned that, you know, um, I could only worry about my side of the street. I had made my peace with it. There's no reason for me to keep going in. So at that point he was arguing all by himself. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, going back and forth with him. You I just like participating. Him. Yeah. I was just... not participating. I'd given my apology and I'd let it go. Um, we eventually, he had something else that he came to me and he was upset about. And I said, more specifically, I apologize that I said this and I said that. And one thing I learned about myself was that I didn't know was that, wow, I have a really terrible temper. I had, I didn't know that about myself. I didn't know I had a terrible temper. I knew that, um, I had a sharp tongue, you know, that's something that my, my mom had said to me my whole teenage years. Yeah. I knew that I had a sharp tongue. Yeah. But I didn't know that I had a temper and I didn't know that I could let it get away from me and say things that I really didn't mean. Looking back, I really didn't mean those things. Um, and I really didn't think those things about him. He would even say to me in the arguments, I know you and you would never have chose me. You never would have married me if I was this man. He's holding up to me who who he knows I am. And I was thinking, well, I just made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes and picking you was one of those. You know, I was just really um, saying some things that I shouldn't have been saying. And so I apologized and it took months um, for him to really hear me and accept that apology because I realized I had done a lot of damage in the sense that I was not a safe place. And this is not, you know, me bashing me. This is me seeing 
me for who I was and what I was doing. And that if, if the situation were reversed, if he had ever been someone who had talking, talked to me the way that I'd spoken to him and was derogatory and, um, put him, put me down and told me that I was lazy and told me that he couldn't depend on me. Um, I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't go to him with my deepest, darkest thoughts. I wouldn't tell him I loved him and want to snuggle up to the opposite, you know? And so prior to us being married, we were, he was so affectionate and I had even criticized um, his affection. I, I told him that, you know, oh, you're just always touching on me. I just, I don't have any space. You know, I just, everything about him that was good and pure and kind. I mean, I had just ripped it apart mm -hmm. and he had never, um, I had to be honest with myself. That's not the way that he was approaching me. Yes. He had his, his problems. He had his, because he's a mere mortal man, Sure, but he was not approaching me in the same way that I was approaching him. And so, um, it was very eye opening, and um, you know, I absolutely apologized. And um, but how hard was that, though, Renee? When you, I mean, he was the problem. You know, mm -hmm. he was the one that needed to change, and now here mm -hmm. you are apologizing to him, like. I mean, didn't part of you think, why am I, why isn't he apologizing to me? Yeah. And I'll why be honest. Why do I have to do this? <laughs> right? Why do I have to do this? And I'll be honest, there were a couple of times where, you know, <laughs> I'd said my apologies and, you know, I came back and I was like, and by the way, you know, I'm <laughs> the one over here trying to work on our relationship and trying, you know, there were some times I couldn't just leave it at the, I'm sorry. Right. There was some times where, and uh, for me, I've been working on these skills for seven years. So it's taken me this long to get to where I am. And it's still the everyday thing. But um, yeah, there were some times where I, it, it wasn't perfect. You know, there was times where I came back and said, you know, and by the way, uh, where's my apology? Or, or you should have said you're sorry for this and that. Now, I'm no longer concerned with um, his shot of the street. My concern is making sure that I'm showing up dignified, that my side of the street is clean and, um, and, and he is so free with the apologies, by the way. Now, Aww. I mean, every little thing, if he does, he'll, um, he, he will come to me and say, you know, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Uh, or, um, you know, he, he has no problem giving me the apologies because I'm not asking for them. Um, and so to answer your question, yeah, the first time it was, it was very hard. The first few times, the, if I'm being honest, the first year or so it was, it was sure. hard. Now we can have an argument. You know, we just had, um, um, you know, an, an argument really, um, it's one of our bigger arguments we had. And, um, and I, I gave him, I gave myself this the space to sit back and really think and then um i went back to him and i said uh i apologize because i said um he said something to me and i said you know that just makes me so mad i just sometimes i think you just treat me like garbage mm -hmm. and that was not true that is not how he treats me at all and i said i came back and i said you know i apologize for saying i feel like sometimes you treat me like garbage that's not true um, and then we moved on. We were able to talk about whatever we needed to talk about. And the, the, we were back on track and healed so fast. At some point I came back and I said, are we okay? And just because it was, it was so, it was so quick how we were able to, to mend something where we would have cold wars. And let me tell you, if, if there's anyone out there who their husband is, you know, is, puts up a wall, stone wall cold wars whatever it is let me tell you my husband deserved an award for how well he was able to stonewall me i've never met anyone in my life never have since who was so effective at the stonewalling technique at the cold wars he was so good at it to the point where i got so frustrated once i was just like pushed him you know he was so good at it Painful. and yeah. And to go from that to be someone who is the best 
so good at, at the Cold Wars to somewhere now where we're able to be on track so quickly. I almost second guess it and say, are we OK? You know, are we are you, yeah. are you sure we're OK? Because we're, because we're able to move on because Do now. You forgive he, me? Yeah. 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 Are you sure you forgive me? Because I did say give me treat me like garbage. <laughs> so are you sure you forgive me? So we're able to move on so quickly um, because he understands that um, I truly am sorry. And number one, I respect him. I respect him as a person. I respect his decision making. And I am so grateful for who he is to me and my family. Um, Another thing that's really changed our relationship is the gratitude. You know, we are a household of gratitude. Our four-year-old daughter, for everything we do for her, we give her, it doesn't matter how big or how small, she's, thank you, mommy, thank you, daddy. And that's because she is fortunate enough to be in a household where we are constantly saying thank you. And that's something that I learned from the skills. I'm, you know, it doesn't matter how big or how small, starting with the thank yous, um, it really has helped our relationship. You know, I'm just constantly saying thank you. And now he's constantly saying thank you back to me. And so it's really, um, it's really pretty remarkable that that's sort of, you know, we're a household of gratitude where everyone's always constantly with the thank yous. You know, sometimes we'll go somewhere and our neighbors will be like, okay, all she did was hand you salad dressing. And you're just like, thank you, love. Thank you. Um, <laughs> they're like, huh, how come there's so yeah. much appreciation for such little things? Is that, for yeah. Little things. yeah. But it's, it's really changed the culture of our, not just our marriage, but it's changed the culture of our family. Um, with the gratitudes, with the thank yous. And, and I'm not always begging, begging um, for love because I get so much love so freely. We had, um, I was telling you earlier um, at the beginning of my story about going to the marriage retreat and my husband wouldn't even dance with me. We've had so many experiences of dancing in our marriage now. We had a big party um, uh, over the summer um, with the neighbors and, you know, he asked me to dance and we were dancing at the party and it was so great. And we recently just went to a formal event, um, not two or three months ago. And, um, he was like, okay, put your, take your heels off and put your comfy shoes on so we can dance, you know, because he knew I wanted to dance. And so same we've man. had some, same, same man, man. Same man asking me to dance, asking me, asking me, not me asking him. No one needed to encourage him or beg him to dance with you after you'd done all that work to. Right. Incredible. Him asking me. And so I'm so grateful um, to you, Laura. I'm so grateful for the skills. I'm so grateful to God for helping me, you know, stumble upon them after everything that I had experimented on and and let me tell you i have tried it all i have tried so many things but i think that the difference is that it's not just it's things that you can put into practice you know and i think that's what's really helped me or these are things that i can do even when we get off track just like we did the other month we, where we had the argument i can say to myself i have the skills where, that i can genuinely get our marriage back on track. Um, but I, I'll say this one last thing, and that is the biggest thing and the thing that took me the longest to do was my own self-care. You know, learning how to love myself and do things for myself and be happy. And, you know, people would always say, um, you know, if you want to be in ha happy in a relationship, you have to make your own self happy. You know, I, I didn't really know what that meant. But now I feel like what people should say is, if you want to be happy, you have to learn how to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Do things to take care of yourself. I feel like that's what I'm teaching my daughter. You know, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful that she'll have all of this when she goes into, she's four now, but you know, when she goes into relationships and not she's even have a great marriage right yeah, she's great getting, marriage she's getting yeah. trained right now 
Absolutely. But to bless her to be, to see a great marriage, to see a great marriage is just, um, you know, my parents were married for 30 years. I thought I knew about marriage. I thought I knew about till death do your part. I saw, I saw what it was for you to, for, you know, them to go through, you know, um, deaths. And I thought I knew what it took. And, um, I was, I was missing a lot of things. Um, I'll tell this one (laughs) quick story about self-care that I think is so funny, but, um, there was this time it was it was during covid and you know you couldn't really go to restaurants and things like that and so you know i had a a couple good girlfriends and we stayed in contact with each other all the time and i thought you know i want it for my self-care i want to go on a picnic and so i was so happy getting ready for the picnic i was you know prepping everything and getting my basket ready and my cooler ready and getting my daughter ready. And I was so happy. And my husband came into the kitchen and I had, I had really only just started using the self-care skills, right? So everything else um, I've, I've been using for a while, but that was something that it took me a while to get. I was so happy that my husband was like, he kind of looked at me curiously, like, you know, what's, what are you so happy about? He didn't say that, but it was written all over his face. And he's not a super social person, but he said to me, um, Hey, do you mind if I go with you on the picnic? And I thought, okay, that's not your usual thing, but sure. Come on, let's go on the picnic. So he, he goes with us, he drives us to the picnic and he, he's carrying all of our things and carrying my daughter and we get to the tree where my friends are sitting and the picnic's all set up. And he just kind of looks around and says, huh, okay, well, I'm going to go run a couple errands. Just call me when you're ready. And I said, okay, sure, no problem. And he puts the things down. And it was only later that I thought, I think my husband thought I was so happy that maybe I was meeting another man or something. Because I was so happy. And he was just like, what is making her so, I was just happy getting ready for the picnic and so and he was so happy to see me so happy you know once he discovered I wasn't you know meeting another man under a tree somewhere but um it was just my friend sitting there under the tree but he he gets so happy to see me happy it doesn't matter what it is if I say Oh, I would just love to watch that movie. And even if the movie, you know, it's streaming for $20, if I'm using that phrase and he knows that's going to make me happy, he's even said to me, oh, I know you're going to really love this movie. I know you're going to be so happy to see this movie. And I said, oh, yes, honey, I'm going to be so happy to see that movie. He is just so thrilled at seeing, I had no idea. I had no idea. I would have been saying I love diamonds all these years if I knew. That's <laughs> if I knew that's all. Uh, yeah. Diamonds make me so happy. I would be yeah. so happy to have. Di- I know. Or any, any. It doesn't matter what you say. Really, he's going to bust himself trying to get that for you, Absolutely. or stream that movie, or yeah, buy some diamonds or whatever. You could get. You're probably going to get diamonds now. Just you, <laughs> you hit on that. Yeah. You never well, know. Right. I mean, um, well, great job with implementing all these skills, Renee, this is uh, so incredible that you went from feeling like how I am trapped. How do I get out of this marriage? Yeah. And I don't hear any of that anymore. I, I no. mean, you sound like, uh, you sound like you have a wonderful man who just Absolutely. wants to make you happy. And, uh, and you know, there's was some low points there where it sounds like he was even feeling like he didn't, he couldn't go on. He, he just couldn't go on. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you were certainly miserable too. And now in place of that, we have what looks like a happy family, not, not a perfect family, right? There's still blowups, uh, but you can recover from those quickly, uh, and still make yourself happy. And, uh, and I just love the part where you feel like you have something so precious to give to your four-year-old daughter uh, and her witnessing, uh, this beautiful romance that's going on in your in your house greatest gift greatest gift laura i could ever have given it almost brings tears my eyes to think that i'm going to be able to give my daughter a a great marriage for her to see that you can be and it's not manipulation i mean there are some points where just me just holding in my tongue not being critical 
you know, in the beginning, yeah, that was, I'll be honest, that was very, very difficult. Um, but now I feel like it's not just what you see in pictures. Like I truly can go home and be happy. Not every day, not everything makes you happy, but, but I can truly say, you know, I'm happily married. You know, you hear those people say, oh yeah, I've been happily married for 20 years. I can say I have been happily married for, you know, nearly eight years. I'm so grateful for my husband. I have such a beautiful, wonderful husband. I'm so glad I didn't give him up for somebody to snatch up. Somebody else would have gotten him, right? Yeah. 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 I'm so grateful. Um, I'm so grateful to you, Laura. I'm just, I'm so grateful for the skills. Wow. Well, that's that. Thank you so much. That's great to hear. I'm, I'm inspired by what you've created. What is your tip for somebody who is where you were and has just gone to all these counselors and just feels like her husband is really the problem? She's pretty much the perfect wife and <laughs> she, but she and she's, you know, feels trapped, but she wants what you have now where, you know, m- most of the time she feels like she's she is happily married uh, to a wonderful man uh, and is role modeling that for her daughter. What's your best tip for her? I would say, honestly, I would say start in the opposite direction that I started, right? Because I did not start with self-care. And I really think that my skills would have been much more easier to implement if that's where I had started. So I would say start taking care of yourself. You know, it doesn't matter. It could be, you know, five minutes in the steam shower or taking a time to paint your nails or just taking the time to just sit and breathe and be by yourself or have a coffee just take care of yourself because you cannot make anyone happy. You cannot make yourself happy. There's no way to make yourself happy if you're not taking care of yourself. It's impossible. It's impossible to not take care of yourself and be happy. They just don't go hand in hand. And so I would say start with taking care of yourself, start there. And then, you know, take an honest look in the mirror and say, where's my, where's my part? Because he'll have part. Yes. He has parts. Oh yeah. He's got parts. Don't you don't have to worry about his parts. He's got, (laughs) I'm telling you, sister, I hear you. He's got parts. Don't worry about his part in it. Where is your part? And can you find the strength to apologize for your part and just leave it there? No excuses. No, but you, No. And when are you going to apologize to me? No, nothing. Just apologize for your part. That's all. You really did start with the graduate level stuff, right? You started with finances and then, and the apology, those are hard. (laughs) And, uh, and then the self-care came later and now it sounds like you recommend maybe start with that first because there's no way to be happy unless you practice self-care and there's no way to have a happy marriage unless you're happy. right? Absolutely. Indispensable. And what do you think you would say if you could go back in time and talk to Renee, what would you tell her that you know now? It's okay. I understand. It is hard. You are doing a good job. You are a good wife. You are a good person. But you need to look at your side of it. Okay? Look at your side. And you can do it. You can do it. And more than anything, darling, take care of yourself. (laughs) I would tell her, sweetheart, (laughs) take care of yourself. Um, take care of yourself. Um, what does that look like for you? Take care of yourself. That's the biggest thing I would tell her, take care of yourself and you will get through this. Don't give up. You can do it. So, so sweet and loving, encouraging, which I love. And of course I want to present you <laughs> my wife award. Renee, oh, congratulations. You did it. Thank you. You, did it. you saved your family. You've made a beautiful marriage where there was once just a, a, an endless cycle of cold wars and, and big blowups. Uh, and now you've created peace in your home and happiness and love. I just can't think of anything that I think is more important. So well done. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your books. Thank you for your podcast. Thank you for all you do in ending world divorce. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiring story today, Renee. I just absolutely loved it. Thank you. 
According to a study at Harvard, and this was horrifying to hear, if you know a couple who's getting divorced, you are 75% more likely to get divorced too. Woo! It matters who you listen to, which is why over 7,000 women like you who think that having a great marriage is important have joined our free Adored Wife group. The Adored Wife Group is a launch pad where you can meet our certified coaches and discover the best next steps for making your marriage last and thrive. It's 100% free to join. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now. This is a private group and it's not for everybody, but if you are a wife or girlfriend who thinks that having a great marriage is important too, we'd all really like to meet you. So go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now to join us free. That's lauradoyle.org slash group. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'll reveal three ways to rebuild a relationship and stop struggling. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that my mama didn't raise no quitters, but she sure did raise a procrastinator. <laughs>